In this video, we're going to take a look at tangent lines and secant lines and how they're related to the derivative. A tangent line is a line that just skims the graph at a point A, f of A, without going through the graph at that point. Now this is a vague description, but it'll do for what we want now. So for example, if I have a graph, it can just skim this point right at the top like this. However, that is in contrast to going through the point where it doesn't skim, but actually it cuts the graph. So the problem that we're dealing with is if we are given a function y equals f of x, how do we find the slope of the tangent line to the graph at that one point? So here's the idea. We know how to find the slope between two points. So let's say we have a curve y equals f of x and has the point p, a f of a, and a nearby point q, x f of x where x does not equal a, then we can find the slope of this line, which is called the secant line. And it'll call it, and we'll call it pq. So the secant line connects the two points on the graph. So the slope of the secant line, pq, will then be f of x minus f of a, all divided by x minus a. So that's the equation of our slope. Now graphically this is what it looks like. So let's say that we have f of x here and we have a point p and it has coordinates a and f of a and then there's another point q way over here which has the coordinates, let's say x, and f of x. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we know how to find the equation of this secant line using our above formula. So our goal here, however, is to find the slope at just the one point right here, P. Now, if I take this line, PQ, and I start moving the point Q along the graph at these different points, I keep drawing the secant line like this. And notice that Q is moving closer and closer to P excuse me, then eventually what happens is that, oh, that one wasn't drawn very well. What happens is that this Q point will eventually become right exactly where P is in the same point. And then we will get a secant line, or sorry, a tangent line. So algebraically, what this means is that this is taking the limit as x approaches a. So what we're saying is that the distance between x and a is actually becoming closer and closer to zero because we're moving our point q closer to point p, and as we do this, the point x approaches the point a. So we can say that the tangent slope at a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of the secant slope between x and a. So by definition, we can say that the tangent line to the curve y equals f of x at the point p, a f of a, is a line through the point p with the slope equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Now without the word limit, and we only take a look at this fraction here, that's the slope of our secant line. However, by putting the limit as x approaches a, what we're saying is that this x is approaching a, and hence this is going to become zero. So if we actually say that x was actually a, we could see that in the numerator and the denominator, it would be zero. 
and we'll, I'll show you how this is going to work. Now this uh, difference here is actually called the difference quotient. And since the tangent line passes through the point A, F of A, we can write the equation of the line by putting in M tan, or the M tangent, which is this formula here. And then we can put our points A and F of A into this point slope form. Now, like I said, when we plug in X as A, we're going to get 0 over 0. So how are we actually going to find the slope of the tangent line if the whole thing is 0 over 0? So let's take a look at an example. So I want to find an equation of the tangent line to f of x equals x squared at the point 3, 9. So according to the above, our slope is equal to the limit as x approaches 3. So this is our x value and this is our y value. So x has to approach the number 3 because we want to know exactly what the slope is at x is 3. And our equation is f of x equal to x squared. So in our numerator, we have x squared minus 3 squared, all divided by x minus 3. So 3 is actually our, it's kind of like our a value, and we're approaching that number. So we can see that this fraction actually can simplify. So in the numerator, we get x minus 3 times x plus 3, all divided by x minus 3. So the x minus 3's can cancel off, and we have the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3. And by plugging in 3, we can see that we get 6. Okay, so the slope at that point is actually 6. And to write my equation, I can put y minus y1 is equal to m, sorry, m times x minus x1. So my point is 3 and 9, and my slope is 6. So I can write this as y minus 9 equals 6 times x minus 3. So you can leave it in this point slope form if you like, or we can also change it into slope y intercept form. Sometimes people like that. So it's y equals 6, x minus 9. And then you can compare and graph it to see if it actually is just skims um, the point at 3, 9. Sometimes you will notice an alternate notation or another expression for the slope of a tangent line that is sometimes easier to use. So if x is equal to a plus h, where h is a little bit moved over in the x direction. So if I go back to my graph here, I have a, and if I add a distance here of h, I will get x. So going back to here, then, I can subtract the a from both sides, and then I'll have x minus a equals to h. So therefore, h is equal to x minus a. And then if both the left side and the right side approach 0, so h equal to x minus a approaches 0, then the slope is going to be m equal to the limit of f of a plus h because normally we have x and then it goes minus f of a but a we can see is still f of a and then all of this will be divided by x minus a but now we can replace it just with h now seeing that this is x minus a approaches zero because we actually had x approaching a from before. So now we have x minus a approaching 0 if I subtract a. But then we know that x minus a from here is actually equal to h. So for my limit underneath, I can write h is approaching 0. So this type of limit is widely used and occurs so often that we give it a special name and notation. And that is called the derivative. So the derivative of a function f at a number a is denoted by f, and notice we have this little line here, we call that a prime. So we say f prime of a, and it is written as 
f prime of a is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a, all of that divided by h. So let's take a look at an example. Find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of y equals g of x at x equals seven, if g of seven is negative two and g prime of seven equals five. So what this g of seven equals to two means is, equals to negative two means is that this is our point. And our point is equal to seven, negative two. Over here, this is our slope, because it says g prime. So the slope, it says that g prime of seven is equal to five. That means that the slope at an x value of seven is five. All right, so just using this information, we can write the equation of the tangent line because we know our point and we know our slope. So our point, we're gonna plug in y minus negative two, so that would be y plus two, and our slope is five, and then we have x minus seven. So we can leave it again in point slope form, or we can change it to slope y-intercept form. And subtract two to get negative 37. All right, let's do another one where this time we actually have to find the slope. So in this one here, it says that the tan um, if the tangent line to y equals f of x at the point negative three eight passes through the point one zero, find f of negative three and also f prime of negative three. Now, we already can see that f of negative three, according to just this point here, we know that when I have x is negative three, my y value is eight. So f of negative three is eight. Now the slope, if you recall, is y two minus y one, divided by x2 minus x1. So the slope is y2 minus y1. So here are my two points. So I can go zero minus eight, all divided by one plus three. So my slope is negative eight divided by four, which is negative two. Now, instead of writing this as m, I'm now going to change this. And because I know that this is um, the slope of negative three, I'm gonna change it to f prime of negative three. Now the reason I can say that it's f prime is because back here, it actually says tangent line. So this is a tangent line and it passes through the point negative three eight and it also passes through one zero. Now the negative three eight is actually on this graph, whereas the point one zero is off. So I can actually give you a little diagram here. So let's say that we have the point negative three and eight, which is over here, okay? And we have um, our slope of negative two, So that means that we have this tangent line and it's passing through some graph, which we don't know the equation of, at negative 3, 8. So the graph might look something like this. 